Welcome back to my garage. Last time we had the brute force engine running on the dyno without any of the electronics hooked up. It would pull its own weight under load. Luckily, today we're gonna hook up some sensors and stuff and see if we can take some measurements, some torque measurements, horsepower. We're gonna dyno it a little bit. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't blow up. You can see my yourdyno.com control box and eddy current power supply here. They're hooked up. We need to hook up the RPM sensor. I was originally going to use this sensor on the retarder itself, the eddy current brake. Jules Stein at yourdyno.com, great guy, made me aware that if I'm going to put this sensor on the retarder and have the load cell mounted on the engine like I have, I would have to calculate the gear ratio, set, set it to zero in the program, pretend this is uh, engine RPM. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna mount this to the engine. Then there's even less things to calculate and worry about. Gotta make a bracket. I'm fine. Fucking hell. I can take a hint. I'm utilizing the existing trigger wheel. The Ignitec ignition unit can output a tachometer signal, but it's 12 volts. And uh, your dyno needs 5 volts. I could use a voltage divider or an opto isolator or something, but uh, this is just quicker. And your dyno really wants more pulses than this one trigger point or what the taco signal would output. We'll probably need to fabricate a multi-tooth uh, trigger wheel after initial testing and put it on the other side. But this will work for now, for testing purposes. In the settings section of uh, the Your Dyno software, I'm zero calibrating my load cell. So now you can see it's reading zero. Now I'm gonna calibrate it with a load. I made up an arm here with a brake disc on. So this is roughly five kilograms. We're gonna redo this more accurately later, but now just to get in the ballpark. And I'm hanging this off the engine here. that establish how far away from the axis of rotation my load is, is situated this is the wrong way around <laughs> roughly 50 centimeters I'll plug that into the software and press load calibrate now if I remove that load we should read about zero again and we're reading about zero. Order of operations, start the engine, let it warm up, check what kind of an RPM range it's working within, enter a suitable sweep range into the software and do a little power sweep just to see where things are at. Here's my minimalist setup for now. Engine RPM, horsepower and torque and brake percentage. We're gonna do a power sweep so as soon as the engine is up to temperature and we know what kind of RPM we can start at and what kind of RPM we can end at, we'll plug that in here and uh, we'll try that sweep, see what happens. Wish me luck. The makeshift bench for the electronics. The water is soon to be hot enough. I've been wearing glasses for a few days now and I think maybe I'm keeping my eyes more open because they're really dry. It's weird. I'm hoping it will pass. <laughs> okay.
With the gear ratio and the clutch, I can't start it at 5,000 RPM as I tried. Nothing is engaged and it just applies full power and nothing happens. I'll try starting the run at 10,000 RPM. I'm also suspecting it running out of fuel at high RPM. So keep an eye on that. A big thanks to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. I actually reached out to them and asked if they wanted to sponsor a video or two because I think this is such a great product. It looks cool, it's lightweight and it solves a problem I've been having. What's so great about this, the Ridge Wallet, apart from its size and the great looks, is how it protects your cards. And that's a problem I've been having with my old wallet. My cards always end up bent and ripped. Let's see here. I can't show you too much of it. Like teared like that and bent and they don't work. And it's solved now with this, the Ridge Wallet. Awesome. Lifetime warranty holds up to 12 cards plus cash. Comes in a bunch of different styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I've chosen the, the plain aluminium because I like plain aluminium. Head to ridge.com slash two stroke stuffing and use the code two stroke stuffing for 10% off. Get yourself one of these awesome wallets. I'm seeing some fairly insane results here. There has to be something wrong. I've looked through my setup here and I can't find anything wrong with it. With how the load cell is calibrated and uh, if I'm not completely stupid, the calibration should be right. It's in the evening, the same day. I've watched the footage. There's something very apparent there, which I didn't notice. If only I had looked behind my back. You could very obviously see the retarder completely stalling, which means the clutch was slipping. I think with the amount of reduction we've got here now, it might be possible to run this without the clutch altogether. Take it apart and either drill holes through the bell into the clutch shoes or make up some like a dummy ring in place of the clutch shoes and uh, thread it and drill holes and, and bolt it to the bell. That's the plan. And also those uh, rose joints on the load cell, they're really, there's a lot of play in them and that might cause like noise and the wrong readings. You might notice I'm in my casual clothes. I'm just out here to take some measurements. At least that's what I'm telling myself. The clutch bell is really shiny and so are the shoes. And there's definitely some uh, grease residue there. Now, do I degrease everything, reassemble and uh, hope for the clutch to grab or do I make this dummy shoe and drill holes make it fixed gear it's not much work and I've got the metal another option would be to just drill three holes in the bell transfer to the shoes and drill through and tap the shoes here I think I'll do that much less work and I won't have to sacrifice this whole big piece of aluminium doing it that way I can actually switch between the two by just removing three bolts We'll try that. I'm always running out of M6 cap heads. I have this extreme consumption. 
I'll drill and tap those two other holes and uh, I'll be back. The now intentionally seized clutch is back on the dyno. I'm heating up the coolant. Let's hope we can start it and have it idle with the retarder connected all the time. And let's hope we can get some numbers. I think there's far too much reduction here for the retarder to work properly. I think the retarder is having a hard time spinning so slow. Might be a good idea to take out the second jack shaft. Now will the engine be able to start and rev up without that extra amount of reduction? Who knows? Let's find out. I think we blew the seal between the two cylinder halves again. Trying to pressurize the coolant jacket with this little pump here, but nothing happens. There's no bubbling or anything around the seams where it leaked. Last time this happened, I have a suspicion there's something going on with the head. It felt kind of odd when I took out the spark plug and uh, I can see why now. It has cleanly sheared the combustion chamber from the squish pan, so that explains it. You can see that my design is kind of flawed and there's not much material holding, holding this piece on there. Need to redesign it, make it stronger. This is at like 0.4 bar and we want to run much more than 0.4. Actually a good thing, much easier to fix this than to split the whole cylinder and press in the liner again and all that stuff. I can easily redesign this to be much stronger. And I've got the material. Good thing we didn't make that clutch through dummy ring thing, cause uh, this is my last piece of suitable material. Perfect size for making a new one of these. Beefing up this area, sacrifice cooling for a part that actually holds together. Now we harvest the fruits of me doing this full time. Not that long ago, this would have been it for this week. Not this time. Whoops, 
I'll take this plate off and replace it with the vise. It's up to the accuracy of the machine now to properly re-zero this. I think we'll be fine. No radius at all and much thinner wall thickness. Big radius, much thicker. I stayed up really late last night getting that part ready and everything assembled again. It's back together now. I've tried calibrating the load cell differently. I hung that five kilogram weight directly from where the load cell is mounted. Then entered three centimeters in the software, which is the distance from the center of rotation to where the load cell is mounted. There's no way that can be incorrect. And the new rose joints I picked up, they're so much better. Okay. I'm not getting too good readings here, but I'm seeing more sensible numbers. Not the two last ones there, though, when I enabled uh, the inertia compensation. But these numbers seem to be more accurate. I'll call that a success. And I don't think between 10 and 14 horsepower is too bad when we're not running any pressure at all yet. The numbers are probably wrong, though. I need to get the dyno sorted. I'll have a chat with you, Stein, at yourdyno.com and see if you can give me some pointers on, uh, on how to how to make this work better. I could also just use it in inertia mode, just to test that, see how it, uh, see how it behaves in inertia mode. Next time, see you next time. <laughs>